Mrs. Baburani Manivasakam. I am a gynecologist, obstetrician and infertility specialist for the past 33 years. I am running an Indo-German fertility center along with the makers of the first test tube baby of Germany. My special interest is in high risk obstetrics and infertility. So today's topic is an awareness program on fertility. I am going to tell how fertility occurs in general population physiologically. All women have one uterus, two ovaries which contain the eggs and two small tubes which are bridging the uterus and the ovary. So when the egg comes, the tube takes up the egg in its end and transports it to the uterus. When it has been absorbed into the tube, if it meets a sperm, it becomes a baby. This baby is initially a single cell, but in, during the journey into the tube to the uterus, in the span of three to four days, it becomes a big uh, cell mass, we, we call it, Murula we call it. Then it becomes a blastocyst and enters into the womb where it can grow well. The tube is a very flimsy structure which cannot carry the baby for term. When it is few cells it can carry and supply some amount of glucose and whatever it needs. But when it grows bigger it cannot carry the baby. That is why when it becomes a tubal pregnancy it becomes problematic. When this baby enters into the womb, the womb is ready with glucose, pyruvate, whatever the baby needs and supplies oxygen by diffusion technique. In 2-3 days to 6-7 days, the baby establishes contact with the inner lining of the womb and it is not a direct contact of blood but through a small membrane, flimsy membrane which becomes a thicker placenta in due course of time the materials are exchanged between the mother and the baby, growing baby. This is called implantation. When the baby has made contact with the mother, the baby's hormone which is called beta HCG transfers to the, diffuses to the mother's blood which is excreted in her urine and we do a urine card test and find out. Totally this takes about 14-16 days. So when you miss your periods or you think probably you have missed your periods by 1-2 to two days, if you do a blood test you will come to know in a very small amount of beta HCG in the blood. If you give another 3-4 days you can see a clear picture in the urine itself. So we usually advise urine test say about 36th day or so. My special interest is in IVF today. So I am going to start explaining about IVF. What is in vitro fertilization? In vitro it means it has to be made in the laboratory outside the body. That's what it means. So we encourage the woman to have many eggs we make her produce many eggs and take away those eggs by a method and then inject the egg with the sperm outside in the laboratory and then incubate that embryos for three days by then they have become viable babies of three days old so when we examine them under microscope we know who are all the best implantable embryos so out of that two or three we take out and insert into the womb like an intrauterine insemination procedure which means we introduce the babies through the vagina through the cervix into the uterus with certain special methods and this is called as the in vitro fertilization and embryo replacement this is how we do the artificial reproduction to expand upon it how we get so many eggs? Why we should have so many eggs? Because one egg, one embryo, if we trans, um, we do embryo transfer, the success rate is a little less. When we keep three embryos, the chances grow a little more. 
so ideally we say not more than three embryos because then multiple pregnancies chances also grows along with the success chance so the complication rate increases a little more so what we do is we suppress the natural production of a single egg usually we are supposed to produce only one egg in human being per cycle or per month instead of that we suppress that mechanism by certain hormone injections and then we encourage production of many eggs by giving few more hormone injections many people get feared about this hormone injections but they are given in a very controlled fashion we are growing the follicles in front of our eyes practically that is serial ultrasound examinations are being done to monitor how many eggs are coming and we do serial hormone assessments to see that it doesn't overthrow whatever we want to get it's less than 15 eggs per person something like that ideal will be somewhere around 5 to 7 but success chance increases a little more when it goes to 15 because we can store some embryos not all patients can produce so many according to their reserve and according to their body weight and according to their hormone levels of AMH, FSH etc. We decide about the number of eggs that can come and number of uh, hormone injections that they need. So ultimately we have got some 10 eggs coming in. When they have reached certain size then we give a release injection and the next day under general anesthetic of a very short duration say 5 to 10 minutes <coughs> we harvest these eggs through, the, through a small needle attached to the ultrasound machine so there is no cut on the body we just through, go through the vagina like our transvaginal scans and take out the eggs and these eggs are handed over to the embryologist who is very well trained and he can handle the gametes very well so once eggs are given there he will put them in the certain solutions and then he will denude the outer layers of the egg so that it gets prepared for injection. He will get the semen from the husband, wash it thoroughly and take out the best of sperms under a big ma magnification of microscope and then choose the anatomically normal sperms and inject one sperm into each egg. So if a husband has very less number of eggs, it's not at all a problem. For 10 eggs, we need only 10 good sperms. If he doesn't even produce sperms, it doesn't matter. If he has sperms inside his testicle, we can take it out with special methods like TISA, PISA and inject those sperms into the egg and make their own progeny. And after this sperm is injected, we incubate that uh, baby for three days so that we will grow them in the lab for three days with certain solutions which are correct for them and at the end of three days we can do the assessment of grading grade one and grade two embryos are the best for transfer grade three can give rise to baby but the chances are much less so we choose only grade one and grade two embryos for transfer and for freezing if we get more number of embryos we freeze them for the next pregnancy or for the next cycle what would be the cost per cycle everybody wonders and they think it is very mammoth but actually in our unit there are four schemes out of that double your chance is the best scheme and you are given two chances with one procedure cost so first cycle you will pay around 1.75 lakhs and for the next cycle you will pay around 50 to 75,000. With this you get two chances to fall pregnant. In one cycle how much is somebody's chance means it depends upon their age, their egg number that they have, ovarian reserve we call it, their BMI, their weight and all this determine the success rate. But Generally, we can quote 50 to 60 percent of success in the first cycle if they are younger with some amount of reserve. And when we say you go for the second cycle if you fail first, 
it adds another 25% of success rate. So ultimately with two cycles of trial you reach up to 75% reasonably. This 75% is falling pregnant. This is pregnancy rate but take home baby rate is 10 to 15 percent less than this because there is some amount of miscarriage many couple ask me one question whether these babies are normal because you are trying to manipulate them outside will it lead to many abnormalities in the baby whether the baby's iq will be good things like that but these are all normal babies otherwise like general population one in 100 babies can have a fault but that is diagnosed even earlier than other babies because these babies are monitored very closely and why there is no abnormality in spite of manipulation we do not manipulate the genetic makeup we only inject it in the cytoplasm so the nuclear material is untouched so it doesn't lead to any complication and how old is our first test tube baby it's about 40 years old and she had a baby of her own naturally and that baby has delivered a baby now that much is the history of artificial reproduction so there need not be any worry or uh, negative feelings about this methods these methods are used mainly for those who are a little elderly where the egg's outer lining becomes thicker where the sperm cannot penetrate naturally those patients benefit from injecting the sperm inside the egg they are one category second category is those who do not have a good tube for various reasons the fallopian tube may be blocked or partially blocked if it is partially blocked the sperm can run through but the embryo cannot traverse through because it cannot traverse it will settle in the tube itself and lead to a tubal pregnancy so they may have to get the tube removed because it cannot hold the baby that's called tubal pregnancy or those who have total block of the tube why this block happens Maybe because of certain infections, tuberculosis is rampant in India. So that becomes one of the main causes. And some may have, nowadays we see patients whose children have had accidents and they have tied their tubes during the second birth of the second child's birth and then they come back for another attempt of pregnancy. So those who do not have a viable tube, they benefit. And as I mentioned earlier, the men whose sperm counts are less, they can have their own progeny, their own child by this method. And there is one more category called unexplained infertility where we cannot find any problem in either of the couple. Both husband and wife are absolutely normal in as per our investigations. There are certain small flaws which we cannot identify but that is bypassed in IVF. How it is bypassed? We don't need the tube. Even if the cervix is not favorable, we bypass the cervix by taking the baby into the womb. So, and if they are not able to produce one good egg, we are producing many eggs and we are choosing the anatomically normal sperm under big magnification. So, these things negate many problems and that is why the success rate with XC or IVF is higher than the natural conception even. A totally normal couple stand 25% of chance to conceive in the first cycle. In intrauterine insemination, this raises up to 30 to 35%. But when we come to in vitro fertilization or ICSI of these couple who are totally normal, it can go up to 80%. So that is the statistics. That is why now IVF method is catching up a lot though the media criticizes a little still the scientific facts speak and there are more people opting for the procedure and there are more specialists who have developed skill to do that and this method has become a boon to the infertile couple. Those who have more doubts or want to clear certain questions 
they can write to our email id which is given down and if they want to consult they can go through our phone number take an appointment and meet us i wish a good baby for every couple to make the marriage a success and a happy event